Okay guys, so in this video, I'm gonna quickly take a fractional decimal number and we're gonna convert it into a single floating point number. So the number I've chosen for this one is 23.75 to the base 10. Okay, don't ask me why, I just chose that number for the sake of it. So 23, we're gonna attack the whole part first because we've done this plenty of times before. We're just gonna take the number and we're gonna divide it by two. We're gonna get the whole value and a remainder. Okay, and we're gonna keep going until this whole value becomes a zero. I'm gonna go 11 divided by two equals five, remainder one. We're gonna go five divided by two equals two, remainder one. Two divided by two equals one, remainder zero. One divided by two equals zero, remainder one. So this is where we stop when we hit this zero. Now, as before, we always read this in an upward direction. So this is our first bit, and that's the last bit, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly put this up the top, so one, zero, one, one, one. And now I'm gonna put a binary point just there, okay? Because we're now gonna tackle our fractional part of the number. And I'm actually gonna scroll down for this, gonna need a little bit more room. So remember, 0 0.75 is our fractional section. So 0 0.75, I don't need that base 10 there, but you get the point. Let's get rid of that. Now, instead of dividing by two like we've done up here, I'm actually gonna do the opposite and we're gonna times by two, okay? So if we double 0 0.7, we get 1.4, and if you double 0 0.05, you get 0.1. So this is 1.5, okay? Now, obviously we don't have remainders for this part because we're timesing, so what you do is you actually take the whole value here and put it on the side. So I put the one here. Now, that's actually me taking that one and putting it over. So that means I'm left with 0 0.5. And I'm gonna keep going until this column gets a zero or we discover a repeated sequence. So sometimes you'll actually start seeing a repeated sequence and it'll never stop. Now we're not gonna do that in this example. So this is a nice easy one because 0 0.5 times two is one. We put the whole value over here and we're left with zero. So that's actually where we stop. Now, the difference between these two sections here is this one's read upside down, this one, is read the right way around, okay? A little bit confusing for this example, but let's put it on the end of our dot. So one, then one, and that's to base two. So this is our fixed point notation here, and we're getting closer to our floating point notation. What we have to do now is move this dot, and that's gonna become our floating point notation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cheat. I am going to copy this number here, because I am such a cheater. I'm gonna place it down here, and we're gonna move on to step two. So step two is actually quite easy. We're going to move this dot as many places as we can to place it in front of a one. So what I mean by that is there's a one at the front here. Well, I want the dot sitting right here. Now, because we're moving left, we're moving in a positive direction. If we were moving right, we'd be moving in a negative direction. And I'll talk about what that means in a sec. So let's move this dot. So let's go one, two, three, four movements to just that spot there. So remember that number, one, two, three, four, that's the most important part. So what this becomes is 1.011111. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, just like scientific notation, we do times on the end by the base, and then how many spaces we moved. Now, because we've moved in a left direction, it's a positive four. If we were to move in a right direction, at four spaces, it would be a negative four here. And that's actually really important, that changes everything. And this guy is actually the most important part at the moment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out our, ment our exponent, sorry, to start with. So I'm gonna put E equals. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the number 127 for single floating point numbers, and we're gonna add on our four spaces. Now don't worry about this number right now, I'll get to that in a bit. So 127 plus four is 131. It's a nice easy number. And then we have to convert it to binary. So it is one for 128, we're left with three, so that's 64, 32, 16, eight, four, two, and one. Okay, so that's 131 in binary there. Now that we've got the exponent, let's do the mantissa, which is actually really, really easy. The mantissa is literally this section here. Okay, so the mantissa is zero, one, 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 one. Okay, so we've now got our exponent and we've got our mantissa. Let's put it all together. Let's get the sine to start with, okay? Because it always goes sine, exponent, mantissa in the order. To get the sine, just look at this. This is a positive number here, so our sine is going to be a zero. Let's go sine, zero. Let's go exponent, 
P is this up here. So let's go one zero 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 one one. Then Mantissa is zero one 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 one. Now the biggest problem is even with a single floating point number, the Mantissa is much longer than what we've got here. So we have to fill it up with zeros. Now a single floating point Mantissa is twenty three bits. We've got one two three four five six seven eight nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And that's our answer there, okay? So 23.75 equals all this. Now in an exam, I would actually write 23.75 to the base 10 equals 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, and that is our answer, base two. That is how you convert a decimal number into a floating point number. Good luck, guys.